Hey guys, um, I'm back with single issue reviews. Um, this time, um, it's number ones only. It's a stash full of number ones. Uh, why number ones? Because of you and because of me. People nowadays don't jump on the bandwagon. If a title is in its teens, it's already like, ah, I'll wait for the reboot. And this is why reboots happen all the time. Uh, it's our fault. Um, but this isn't like the typical fare from the big two. There is no Marvel and no DC book in this stash. And um, let me kick off the whole thing with um, a comic by Matt Kent. Um, I have three number ones by Matt Kent in this stash from the past two weeks or so, or three maybe. And um, yeah, this is Divinity 2 number one. It's like Roman 2. Um, why Divinity 2? Because um, last year, I think, yeah, like 12 or 18 months ago, Divinity, the first miniseries was released. It was quite a hit for Valiant. Um, Valiant Comics, you probably have heard of them. Um, they are... Um, they're publishing comics which were first published in the 90s. Um, it's a superhero universe, uh, but uh, in the 90s it was created by um, Jim Shooter. Um, he was the main architect of the whole project. And it was based on this uh, mid to late 80s trope of uh, how could superheroes become more uh, realistic? What if they would really, really uh, live in our world, what were, uh, would their behavior be like and you know the whole Watchmen thing but on a more let's say um, accessible um, um, basis because you can't do a masterwork any, any other month but uh, you can base your books on a more realist um, uh, approach and uh, they were a big success uh, in the 90s, also because of the speculators market and whatever, but uh, mainly because uh, the characters felt very real and the heroes were, were very flawed. It wasn't just about being dark or, you know, brutal. It was just like Marvel in the 60s um, about everyday lives and everyday people. and. Well, I wouldn't say the main character here is a very everyday person. I mean, she's a cosmonaut, but um, getting there, um, um, so we get a little bit of a backstory of this of this woman who uh, becomes an uh, cosmonaut, cosmonaut because uh, she's a Russian uh, woman, uh, and she is on a mission um, to a faraway planet where. Um, she discovers something, something that sh uh, that is changing her, and when she returns, she's different. And, but we also find out about her backstory, um, how she gets into this program, uh, how she grew up in Russia, and and I think it's, I mean, look at this cover, it's so beautiful. I think it's one of the best covers I've seen in a long time. It's so poetic and. Um, I mean, the artwork in general is mind-blowing, uh, really. Um, Trevor Harrison uh, did a tremendous job on this. Uh, so did the colorists. Um, I'm not sure, David Barron, maybe. Uh, let me check it because, yes, it's David Barron. Uh, and I have to name him because look at those pages. Uh, this is incredible. So if you were thinking about giving Valiant a shot, Mm, this might be a good entry. It's a standalone story and it's really, really good. I'm sorry for the hiccups. Um, next one is another Valiant number one. It's 4001 AD. Um, it's, um, you could say it's a summer event um, thing, a crossover in a way. Uh, the way that Valiant is doing this uh, is mostly having a mini-series of four issues, um, like this too. Uh, this is uh, uh, the first of four issues. And along with that, you have um, one-shots of different characters from the universe um, 
uh, just tying in so um, you don't have to buy all of them you can just buy the mini series or you can just select the characters that you're interested in um, so I think it's a clever way of doing um, those kind of things um, yeah back to 4001 AD this um, spins out of Ray or Rai um, which is a title published by Valian I think it's now in its teens <laughs> but it starts a new arc with number 13 and I will jump back in and maybe you will too after reading this which was fairly great I have to say I was surprised of I mean I liked it very much but the the story is great and everything but um, the art I mean this is an introductory page this is nothing I think it's by David Mack who also uh, does some variant covers now for for Valian and Dustin for for Rai especially and you know David Mack has this connection to Japan and Rai is a Japanese hero so um, you have to check out those variant covers um, they're like um, they're not like limited or anything you can just pick um, it's like cover B or C or whatever and they're so beautiful um, but uh, let me show you some uh, Clay Clayton Crane art um, I mean the cover is not super spectacular but when we get into the um, inside art this is insane I mean uh, I would like to have this um, 10 times as big because there is so much detail going on here. It's uh, it's crazy, really. Um, I'm not sure it's to everyone's taste because it feels very artificial or computer generated in a way. Uh, but the thing is, it's a good fit for the story because the, the story is... Uh, playing in uh, in the future, 2000 years in the future, like the title suggests. And I won't tell you too much about it other than it's very accessible. Um, you don't have to know anything um, and it's very enjoyable. And um, it's also a good introduction to Valiant's um, um, part of the universe, which is happening in the future um, and uh, which up until now, it's just one series. It's Rai. Um, I think they will expand it a little bit, so it will be probably like one series and one mini or two ongoings or something like that. Um, and um, but you know, this is the interesting thing about Valiant because uh, they are playing this whole shared universe aspect, aspect not only through space; it's the same planet they are all living on, but also through time. So you have stuff happening in the future, at the present and in the past and it's all somehow interconnected and this is, re um, this is something that I like um, it's not every title is, is, is fantastic but um, I would say between uh, um, you know picking up Marvel or DC you should uh, just try um, the alternative which is Valiant all right enough with Valiant, now we're getting to the third Madkin book which is Department H. It's another, you know, you have mind management, now you have Department H and it's a murder mystery um, which is happening underwater um, and this is basically everything that you need to know and um, it's about a woman who has to find out who killed her father and um, the art is, um, I mean, you either like it or you don't. Um, this is drawn by Matt Kent in his very specific uh, style and um, it's painted, um, lushly painted by his wife. Um, and I really like it. I also like the, the, the paper. It's a bit rougher. Um, and not glossy which I love I hate glossy paper um, it makes for a hard read and it just uh, haptically you know the touch is not the same it just doesn't feel like paper so I really like this about uh, this comic but it's it's not <laughs> the paper only I mean this guy can tell stories uh, look at this page here it's so interesting uh, you know the present and the past uh, which gets lost in the gutter in a way and um, uh, he can
can tell stories. He has a good, um, he has a good um, sense for characterization, for build up, and yeah, this is a build up issue. Uh, this is like an introductory issue, uh, a bit of exposition. Not much is happening, but I will definitely be back. I like this uh, quite a bit. All right. Um, next up is Sun Bakery number one by Press Gang. Um, it's an indie comic um, uh, by uh, Cory Lewis. I wasn't um, aware of Cory Lewis before, but um, now I'm really psyched because this guy can bring on um, a certain vibe of energy that is um, somehow specific for manga, uh, but he has like this indie um, you know sensitivity uh, coming with it and uh, it's it's really cool it's just fun to read it's um, it's a bit wacky but in a good way and uh, look at those colors and those super hyper dynamic drawings it's it's just a lot of fun um, and I can totally recommend it you should check it out um, it's an indie book, so um, it's. I think it's very much um, in need of of readers, and um, not very well known. And yeah, that's basically all I have to say about it. Um, Sun Bakery number one. I will definitely sub this one and return for the number two. This is the Fourth Planet number one by Chapter House Comics. Um, it's a Canadian uh, publisher. I wasn't of, aware of um, before this thing here. I um, bought it based on this on a short summary in the, in, in the previous catalog, and it read a lot like an image series. And it, it, it actually it it reads like an image series, a, a good one, I have to add. Um, well, what is it about? It's pretty hard to tell. This is an introduction to the whole um, concept and the universe of it. Um, but I would say it's more on the fantasy side of science fiction. It's about um, a spaceship um, which lands on a, on a, on a, um, a foreign planet and the implications that come with it. This would be like my very, very short <laughs> uh, log line of the story. Uh, what's really interesting is the art for me, which is very, very special. Um, and it has a, a little bit of an Eddie Campbell vibe going uh, for it. Um, but the coloring, of course, is, uh, is very modern and um, very nice. Um, it's glossy paper, but this, uh, in this case, it works. And... Um, yeah, I can totally recommend it. I, I, I have to return for number two or three. I, I don't really know um, where this is going or if it's going anywhere. But um, when I was finishing the issue, I, um, I, I was really anxious to, uh, not anxious, I was really uh, curious to, to read the next one. So this is always a good sign. Uh, the fourth planet number one. By Chapter House Comics. Um, Black Eyed Kids by Aftershock Comics. It's written by Joe Prude and drawn by Shimon Kudransky. Um, this is, I don't know if you if you have ever heard about this uh, urban legend, the Black Eyed Kids. Um, I did um, because I was researching um, for a, for a story of my own uh, into this um, into this phenomenon of kids with special abilities and whatever and um, yeah it's like basically kids who have black eyes and who knock on your door and uh, uh, ask you if they are allowed to come in to phone someone or just to go peeing or whatever and if you invite them in they will do gruesome that things to you. Um, it's not super original um, in, um, you know, the myth itself is not very original and the comic even less, I'm afraid. It's, I read it in, I think, three minutes. The art is nice. Um, 
nothing bad to say about the art, but the writing was like super predictable. Um, and you know, he's playing with this whole eerie shit uh, all the time, but uh, there is no real build up. It's just, it's just there, you know? Look at this, every page is like super, ooh, what's going on? And uh, yeah, well, what's going on? It's the fucking Black Eyed Kids, it's on the cover. So it's a pass. Um, and this is the last number one for today, Cinema Purgatorio. It's the new uh, anthology um, released by Avatar Comics and um, you know, curated in a way or heralded by uh, Alan Moore. Uh, you may have heard of him. Um, and yeah, Alan Moore it has also a story in it, uh, together with Kevin O'Neill of uh, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Um, a story which I didn't really get, but I think it's just a mini setup for what's to come. Um, but it's so set up -y. it's like a it's a it's in a dream state so um it's hard to make um too much sense of out of it um however um i really like the garth ennis story um it's garth ennis and raulo caceres um, and the art is cool i love this kind of art it's like you know very heavy on the blacks and uh Kind of like an underground horror comic art which i really enjoy and uh, for which avatar is basically known for and i like the story the setup i didn't know the character it's supposedly a, a known established character uh, code pru um, i didn't know it and it was fun and um, next up was Kieran gillen and ignacio calero um, uh, you know, it's like Avatar. Uh, everyone's uh, um, is, is on his on his worst behavior. Uh, they're doing like the craziest and sickest stuff going on in their minds. And uh, this is this is not necessarily sick, but it's just like super weird. Um, the artwork is nice. Um, if this was the only uh, episode where I thought, okay, this is a kind of artwork which where where coloring would have helped you know um just to distinguish what's what um the story um, i don't know okay i guess uh, there is no big story yet um then there is one um about gettys the gettysburg um you know the civil american civil war and the gettysburg um fight um it's by I don't know this guy. Uh, oh, was it Chris's Gage? No. Max Brooks and Michael De Pascal. Um, it was nice, but also more of a setup. And then you have Chris's Gage with um, a very, very short um, five pages introductory story or six pages, which uh, is fantastically drawn. Look at this. Whoa crazy shit uh, but also like um, very much of a setup I would I have already pre-ordered number two so I will give it another shot I love the cover <laughs> it's fantastic other than that um, I don't know maybe you should just sample it if you like it buy it if not uh, go and buy some Mad King comics so Thank you very much for watching and I will return very soon with a whole video for the comics I bought, the graphic novels and the collections that I bought uh, last month. Um, until then, you can subscribe me here and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.